Hi, I'm Dr. Howard McAllister. I'm one of the reflux specialists at the Minnesota Reflux and Heartburn Center. My talk today is going to be a brief introduction to gastroesophageal reflux disease, some of its symptoms, and some of the impact that it has on the population of the United States. Let's talk a little bit about the general prevalence of gastroesophageal reflux disease and some of the effect that it has in the United States. We see this as being prevalent in about 10% of the Western population of the world, and that represents about 100 million people. It's the leading diagnosis in most outpatient clinics. It uh, costs us over $9 billion in annual costs in the United States alone. It's a significant contributor to absenteeism and reduced productivity in the workplace. And most alarming of all is that it causes cancer. We've seen over the last 30 years about a 717% increase in the incidence of esophageal adenocarcinoma. That's a nasty disease and it's one that we want to do everything we can do to prevent. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, is a condition that causes the burning sensation known as heartburn. When you swallow, food passes down your throat and through your esophagus, or food tube, to your stomach. A muscle called the lower esophageal sphincter controls the opening between the esophagus and the stomach. This muscle remains tightly closed except when you swallow food. When the sphincter fails to close, the acid-containing contents of the stomach can travel back up into the esophagus. This backward movement is called reflux. When stomach acid enters the lower part of the esophagus, it can produce a burning sensation commonly referred to as heartburn. The lower esophageal sphincter is a ring of muscle at the end of the esophagus whose job it is to squeeze tightly enough that it pinches off the esophagus from the stomach in order to keep stomach acid and digestive enzymes out of the esophagus. That's important because while the stomach has a lining that allows it to protect itself from those acids, the esophagus has a different kind of lining and it can't. If that sphincter valve weakens or fails over time, bad things can happen in the lower esophagus as a result of the damage that it causes. That can be classic disabling heartburn, but several other issues can occur as a result of that reflux, and I'm going to touch on those in a moment. We estimate that there are about 20 million people in the United States who are taking powerful drugs like Prilosec in an effort to try to control their reflux symptoms. This is even more prevalent now that these drugs are available over the counter. You can see how common the reflux problem is in the United States by noting that even convenience stores, gas stations, have them on the rack. Of that 20 million people, about 60 to 70 percent find that those medications work pretty well to control their symptoms. But another 30 to 40 percent that take those drugs find that, it, although it might improve the symptoms, it doesn't really control them to their satisfaction. They are the so-called walking wounded of the reflux world. The medication just doesn't work as well as they would like. They have to make other compromises in their life, usually in relationship to the foods that they eat, in order to keep their reflux from ruling their life. At the end of that scale, there are the people whose symptoms are so intrusive and so poorly managed by medication that they end up requiring surgery in order to restore that reflux barrier and control their reflux disease. So we have the people, about 60 to 70 percent of reflux sufferers, for whom at least for a while the medication controls the symptoms to their satisfaction. And on the other end, we have the 1% or so of reflux sufferers who have had their reflux disease well controlled by surgery. In the middle here, about 30 to 40% of, the, of that GERD population are the people who continue to have gastroesophageal reflux symptoms that rule their lives. This is where today's well-trained and knowledgeable reflux specialists, such as we have here at Minnesota Reflux and Heartburn Center, try to focus our efforts. Controlling the reflux symptoms in people who otherwise have poorly controlled gastroesophageal reflux disease. Despite the medications, it continues to rule their lives, and we want to help those people. As I mentioned, the body has a natural barrier whose job it is to stop stomach acids from refluxing back into the esophagus. That has two components, the lower esophageal sphincter and the supporting pressure from the opening in the diaphragm that the esophagus goes through on its way to the stomach. That's called the esophageal hiatus. Reflux occurs when either or both of these two components are too weak, uh, working together to keep stomach acids in the stomach where they belong. The weak sphincter muscle is easy to understand, but let me take a moment to explain hiatus hernia. 
that's a condition where the opening of the diaphragm weakens to the point where it no longer can keep the stomach completely in the abdominal cavity and part of it slips upward inside the chest. That's a very common problem. Many people have hiatus hernia, but the problem comes in when that lower esophageal sphincter valve is displaced upward too. In many cases, that will further impair the ability of the lower esophageal sphincter to do its job, and it will prevent people from keeping stomach contents in the stomach. That reflux then can represent the symptoms of reflux disease. The question, I guess, that we always ask is why is the lower esophageal sphincter weak? Why does that reflux barrier fail? Well, it does run in families. There's no question we see this in families. The lower esophageal sphincter, uh, sphincter shortens over time, uh, and especially with a full stomach, obesity, and pregnancy. Uh, the uh, lower esophageal sphincter can weaken over time as we age, so this is a more common problem as we get older. And there are a number of drug effects and uh, other things in our diet, such as alcohol, nicotine, and caffeine, that are going to loosen up that reflux barrier as well and allow reflux. There is, as I mentioned, an association with hiatal hernias. Uh, we also see genetic defects in the musculature and the muscle barrier that keeps the uh, anatomy where it belongs. And this is oftentimes due to deficient collagen cross-linking, uh, which is part of the aging process. Uh, there are a number of symptoms of GERD, but it's important to note that only about 50% per, uh, of people with significant reflux disease actually have heartburn as their primary symptom. The rest of the people can have a wide constellation and combination of symptoms. GERD may cause such severe chest pain as to mimic a heart attack. In fact, about 30% of emergency room visits for chest pain are due to the symptoms of GERD. But people will also complain of regurgitation at night. They oftentimes wake up, bolt upright as stomach contents are coming back into the back of their throat, uh, giving them a sensation that they can't breathe. We see that that reflux can go so far up the esophagus it can actually hit the vocal cords and cause hoarseness and voice changes. We note that there is a very a constant uh, problem with epigastric pain, and that's kind of the hallmark here. Also, chest pain, as I mentioned, is a, is a serious issue. Patients can have chronic coughing, uh, and this can seriously impair their life. Uh, they have a sore throat oftentimes. Uh, there's constant throat clearing that a lot of these people have. Uh, they may have difficulty swallowing and choking, especially with things like pills. And they may have sinus symptoms, such as uh, problems of recurring sinus infections. There are a number of other uh, associated comorbidities that can go along with this. Uh, things like weight loss because of the changes in diet. There are just things that you just cannot eat. Uh, oftentimes a bitter or bile taste in the mouth. Asthma is very commonly associated with reflux disease. Uh, there is, uh, you can get recurrent pneumonias because sometimes that reflux ache that comes out of the stomach and the esophagus can be aspirated into the lungs. And that can also cause chronic bronchitis. Uh, it can cause dental problems. It can cause bad breath. Because of air swallowing that goes along with the discomfort, uh, people will oftentimes have excessive belching and bloating. Uh, they'll oftentimes complain of a lump in the throat. And this can also be frequently associated with nausea and vomiting. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please contact us anytime.